Hello there all, my name is Kate and welcome, welcome to this channel. Today we're visiting Geneva, it's a city in southwestern Switzerland, the capital of the French-speaking canton of the same name. Geneva is the second largest city in the country. We've arrived here in spring, so we're going to enjoy Geneva in full bloom. And today I'm going to tell you about the top 10 sites worth visiting in Geneva. As I pointed out, we're here in spring, so we're going to see a lot of parks and botanical garden, we're going to see a lot of gorgeous buildings, churches and the like. We arrived here by train, traveled throughout the entire Switzerland, it took us four hours or so, now exhausted waiting at the reception for the hotel room. A positive surprise, the hotels are actually quite a bit cheaper than in any other large cities of Switzerland, to my personal experience at least. So we're going to start with a little bit of history and everything started long, long time ago with the Celtic settlement of Genava, which basically turned into Geneva eventually. And it was already mentioned by Julius Caesar in the first century BC. In the Roman era, the city flourished because it was on the intersection of two very important strategic roads, one to the Rhone Valley, the territory of present-day France, and the other to Basel in southern Germany. So as we say, <laughs> as I say in real estate, location, location, location. So location played a crucial role for Geneva. Geneva was, for that reason as well, <laughs> later captured by multiple tribes, including Aleman tribes at first and Burgundians. In 534, they were forced out, Burgundians that is, by Franks, making Geneva a part of Merovingian kingdom. Uh, then Burgundians returned, then German emperors appeared for a while, and then finally Dukes of Savoy became the rulers of Geneva. By 14th century, Geneva had grown into a great large city, predominantly due to the trade of goods from Italy, Spain and France, again due to its favorable location, and later developed a lot of handicrafts and industries. By the middle of 15th century, there were already insurance companies and banks, several printing houses, academies, which greatly contributed to the enlightenment and free thinking of the city. Geneva became independent, or so to say, received self-government rights in 1387, and in the 16th century the city became a center of reformation, where a large number of refugees rushed, including those from neighboring France. And in 1526 Geneva, Zurich and Bern entered a defensive alliance, and in 1584 a permanent alliance was established between the cities. Only in 1815 Geneva would actually become a full member of Swiss Confederation. In 1798, Geneva actually, for a short period of time, was part of France when Napoleon annexed Geneva and made it a separate department of Le Mans and a part of France. Today, Geneva is the world financial, political and scientific center. In 2009, it was named as one of the most expensive cities in the world. Interestingly enough, it didn't seem so expensive to Zurich. In general, French-speaking part of Switzerland does not seem quite as expensive as the German-speaking part, just so you know, <laughs> but it is still quite expensive as everything else in Switzerland. The headquarters of numerous international organizations are located here, and here are going to be a lot of abbreviations, UN, European Office, Red Cross, WTO, WHO, and CERN. Number one on our list, Geneva Cathedral or St. Pierre's Cathedral. One of the main attractions of the city, the cathedral was built on the site of Christian sanctuaries of the 4th century, and it was built for roughly 150 years from 1160 to 1310. Thank you. 
originally was intended to be in a Romanesque style, but a lot has changed <laughs> over time. It acquired some Gothic features uh, in 1406 to 1449. It was rebuilt several times and eventually it even got facade in the spirit of classicism in the middle of 18th century. When you look at the cathedral, strictly speaking from architectural perspective, it is fascinating. There's so many styles there. I've never seen such an eclectic cathedral in my life. And surprisingly enough, everything looks how oh, beautiful. Everything works. It looks a little bit chaotic and as I pointed out, super eclectic, but it works somehow. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't agree. So in 1535, St. Peter's Cathedral has been reformed, a reformed temple, and was one of the first churches of Calvinism. One of the main treasures of the cathedral, by the way, is Calvin's chair. And on the top of the north tower of the cathedral, there is an observation deck. And if you manage to go all the way up, you will see a wonderful, beautiful panorama of the city, the lake and the surrounding area, even the surrounding mountains. Number two, probably the most famous site, Geneva Fountain on the Lake Geneva. The name of this fountain translates as the Jet of Water, it's pretty self-explanatory or self-evident. This is one of the largest fountains in the world. 500 liters of water per second rise to the height of 140 meters. Water exits the pipe at the speed of 200 kilometers per hour. So, so probably wouldn't recommend riding it. And about 7,000 liters of water are in the air every second. Number three, English Garden is a landscape park that was laid out here in the 19th century, right on the shores of Lake Geneva. The main attraction here is the flower clock, which has become a symbol of Geneva's leading role in the global watch industry. The modern watches that we see right now have existed here since 1955. The diameter of the watches is 5 meters. The clock is formed from 6,500 flowers. They're blooming in turn and three times during the summer they change color, changing the color of the dial entirely. Parks are loved by locals and people spend a lot of time in parks. There are a lot of outdoor gyms, so you can actually exercise. People run here, obviously walk here, have picnics, play frisbee with their dogs. Not sure who's more charming, the dogs or the owners sometimes. A lot of yoga and tai chi classes are organized in the parks, given the Geneva enjoys a great climate, a lot of the outdoor activities are actually available pretty much throughout the year. And number four in our list, Lake Geneva, also called Lake Leman, is the largest lake in the Alps. It's divided between Switzerland and France. The lake is an integral part of Geneva. And obviously a lot of activities that can be done in the city are there due to the lake. And you can take boats, there are many tourist boats that will take you around the nearby cities and around Geneva. You can swim there in the good weather. Beautiful views, clean air, lush vegetation and very, very good climate earned Geneva and the area around a uh, name of Swiss Riviera. And most exciting part of the lake is actually the fact that a lot of exhibitions, the outdoor exhibitions, take place by the lake. And the one that we caught was La Quête, is a, from a Belgian comic created by Philippe Killock, published in the uh, newspaper La Soie since 1983. During its existence, it became the bestseller of Franco-Belgian comic series. It's a very, very interesting character. So it's an adult cat, fairly large in its sizes, a little bit obese, with the same facial expression all the time that goes into a lot of complex reasonings and considers a lot of big questions with absolutely hilarious, absurd conclusions. His favorite start of every day is what if, what if this and what if that. So for its 20th anniversary of La Cat in 2013, La Soie allowed uh, Gluck to illustrate the entire newspaper with this lovely cat and then exhibition celebrating the creator of La Cat was held for the first time in Auto World Automobile Museum in Brussels and we were so lucky as to catch it in Geneva when we were visiting. Check it out and you might be lucky to see some sort of outdoor exhibitions close to the lake.
Number five on our list, the absolutely worthy place to visit would be obviously the old town of Geneva. It's a rather compact, lovely, absolutely beautiful old town, easy to get around by food in about an hour or so, unless of course you stop around in numerous restaurants and coffee shops, beautiful galleries and antique shops. In such a case, I would plan a day. In the heart of the old town of Geneva, that is also the largest historical center of Switzerland, you will find St. Pierre Cathedral the one that we spoke about earlier. There are plenty of narrow cobbled streets to tell the stories of the area if you pay attention to the signs and the buildings. There are a lot of interesting stories and legends about the buildings, so pay attention. Here you will find many cozy squares, historical buildings, plenty of wonderful museums, and a lot of secret passages that only locals know about, so ask the locals to show you those. A lot of medieval legends associated with Geneva, so ask again the locals to tell you the lovely stories of the city. So most of the beautiful sites that I've mentioned here in the video, most of the top 10 are actually in the old town. So I would highly recommend scheduling at least a day for the old town lawn where you would be able to cover most of the sites, including the reformation wall that we will talk about shortly, St. Pierre Cathedral, the largest square in the old town called Place de Bourg de Four, and many more. And number six on our list, the Palace of Nations in Mostsi, the European headquarters of the United Nations, a place worth visiting for architecture alone. It is considered to be an outstanding testimony to the 20th century architecture. The buildings were built between 1929 and 1938. It is located in the beautiful Ariana Park. Here also you would find the famous chair monument, a chair without one leg, a testimony against the landmark that leave people without legs or lives. And number seven on our list, my favorite square in the city, Square of Bourg de Four. It's the most charming, beautiful square of the old town. It's located on the site of ancient Roman Forum and later used to be a medieval market. The square has beautiful architecture, lovely 18th century fountain. It is the oldest square in Geneva, a great place to take a break after long walks in the old town. There are plenty of beautiful terrace cafes with great coffee. So try it, pay attention to how narrow the buildings are, how close they are together and pay attention to the fact that roofs are actually apartments as well. They were developed into apartments during the need for extra living spaces when a lot of Protestants were fleeing the repressions from surrounding countries including France and that what brought them here, making roofs valuable real estate. And number eight on our list, a lovely Geneva's Botanical Garden is a must visit for anyone, be you family with kids, couples or singles, it doesn't matter, it's a great place to rest your busy mind and enjoy the tranquility of this beautiful place. The garden is home to over 16,000 different species of plants, trees, shrubs, blooming in different seasons, especially spring, one of my favorite seasons. I really enjoyed it. So it was opened in 1904 in the outskirts of the city and covers the area of 28 hectares, so it's large. It's a favorite vacation spot for locals and for guests with a variety of landscapes that were recreated here. It's actually very, very close to the Palace of Nations, so you can do two sites on one go. We just enjoyed a glass of wine and a picnic, run into a peacock, which was lovely. There are actually birds there as well in abundance. And number nine on our list, the Reformation Wall or International Monument to the Reformation. It was inaugurated in Geneva in 1909 and it honors many of the main individuals, events and documents of Protestant Reformation depicting them in massive statues. The wall is in the grounds of University of Geneva, which was actually founded by John Calvin, and it was built to commemorate 400th anniversary of Calvin's birth and 350th anniversary of the university's establishment.
The grounds themselves are lovely. You can play chess there if you're interested. The park is beautiful. The buildings are stunning. It's a lovely place to visit in its own right and certainly paying respect to the Reformation Wall, I think, is a uh, is an important thing to do because because of Reformation anyways we enjoy the life that we enjoy today. And number 10 on our list, Square des Alpes. It's a beautiful alpine garden on the shores of Lake Geneva and there you will find a majestic Brunswick monument. It is located in the very center of Geneva, attracts tourists with its extraordinary gorgeous Gothic architecture. The Brunswick monument has probably some of the most interesting history of historical sites ever. It was erected in honor of Duke Brunswick, who was not the best ruler at all. He led an awful lifestyle, he lost fortune in gambling. However, before his death, he bequeathed 22 million francs to the city's budget, but with the condition that beautiful monument would be erected in his honor. In those days, a lot of people disagreed. There was a scandal associated with this and a lot of controversy. However, city needed money and the monument was built. That would be all for the top 10 in Geneva. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to put the like and see you soon.